Great. Hello. Hello. Yes, us. You have to see the view from up here because it's you're looking beautiful, beautiful theater. It's such an honor to be here. My name is Yes, of course. Of course, he, he said, and I'm an educational consultant. And I'm here because I'm part of a team that's building a game to train surgeons. And not just a game, it's a game on the Nintendo Wii U. And since it's just, you know, us, let me in on, uh, I'll let you in on a, on a secret. I'm a huge, huge game nerd. I play games all day, and I love reading about them, and I love reading about gadgets. And I never thought the worlds of my, my pastime, my hobby, would meet with a serious medical world that I'm in as, a, as an educational consultant. But it did. So, um, before I uh, uh, go on, I need to tell you what laparoscopic surgery actually is. And who, who doesn't know what laparoscopic surgery is? Hand please. Some people, oh, this is an educated crowd. So for the people maybe watching the video later on, let me explain. Laparoscopic surgery, instead of opening up uh, uh, someone with a, with a big incision, you make three small incisions. In two of those uh, go the instruments, and in one there's the uh, camera and the insufflator. And what makes it hard instead of, uh, uh, what makes this technique very hard to do is that you're watching a video screen instead of using your two eyes, and you have your hands removed by these instruments that pivot. And let me explain. <clears throat> Anyone in the audience have pencils? You have a pencil with you. Take out your pencils. This is normal surgery. You have your hands and you just write. When you do laparoscopic surgery, you stick the pen in like this, and you have these inverse movements. And you only have one eye since you're looking at a screen. And this is, is really hard to do. Try to write like this when you're at home. And a, a surgeon performing laparoscopic surgery, he does this with two hands. And with the light from the camera coming from behind. So he doesn't see any shadow. So he doesn't have a clue uh, about depth perception. And that's why uh, at our hospital and at our hospitals all around the world, uh, uh, our doctors get trained very extensively. And one of the things you need to learn is the basic motor skills of laparoscopy. So the way uh, to know where the instruments are and how they move and where they are in, uh, in the abdomen. And we use simulators for this. But there's one problem. Most simulators, we thought our residents and our doctors, uh, surgeons in training, they would love them. But it's quite mysterious. They don't, they don't like to use them. Instead, they're playing games like this. I'm, at the moment I'm playing Bioshock Infinite. Anyone here in the audience playing Bioshock Infinite? No? You should. It's a great game. And what's great about it, one of the things I like about playing games, it, it makes you lose track of time. You're totally immersed in a different world. So what we thought was, can we make those simulators that the residents don't like using, and make them as engaging and as cool to play and as immersive, that make you lose time? So, we went out and uh, tried to find such a game, and there wasn't any, so we had to make it ourselves. And the first thing we needed to do was um, have the controls ready, because we needed to make the laparoscopic movements. And it needed to be uh, available in the stores, uh, it needed to be cost, uh, not, not very costly, and it needed to make the movements that you, uh, that you make during laparoscopic uh, surgery. And be precise enough to detect those movements. And quickly, we came to the Wii. This was about, I think, about four years ago. And I had this at home, I was playing Super Mario and all things like this. But normally when you play on the Wii, you're making these big movements like playing tennis or bowling. But now, we had to detect these really small movements. So we set out and uh, we tried to see if we could track those, those precise movements. And we could. So now we could build ourselves prototypes of how the controls would look like. And it started, oh, before I go on, this is how the Wii uh, knows its position uh, uh, um, to the television. On your television, there's the Wii sensor bar, and there's two lights inside of them at a fixed distance. And in front of this Wiimote, 
there's an infrared camera looking at those both lights. And, well, basic triangulation that you learned in high school. If you know a fixed distance and the corner at which you're looking at it, you know the distance uh, uh, from the object you're looking at. And this is how the Wii knows its position relative to the TV. And this is what we used to build the game, and to build the controls. This is one of the first prototypes. It looks really cool. Uh, it worked, but the problem was, was it was too expensive and it was too big. I, had it to, uh, I brought it to the Game Developers Conference in 2010, and it was in this mini elephant-sized thing. I, it's, a one, it's, it's a miracle I got through customs with it. <laughs> so then we started building other prototypes. This is one, and here you see uh, the, the basis of uh, um, uh, the, uh, the final model. It's the Wiimote looking at four infrared lights. So instead of using two, we used four and we could even detect more precise movements. So building all kinds of beautiful prototypes. This took very long. Even this is uh, the handwork of Hank Zinkata, the market the surgeon who made this in his own shed. And then finally we came to this. This is the final, uh, the final model of the, the controls that, you, that you're using. And you see the Wii remote, and if you look closely you can see the nunchuck, the thing with the joystick on it. And this is how the whole thing looks. Two controls making the motions of laparoscopic surgery with the pivot points and also the four infrared lights that are, that are in there. So now we have the controls, but trying to beat the simulator in being, well, more entertaining and wanting you to play more, you need a very good game, because otherwise it just, well, you just, uh, uh, you didn't spend your time well. So, we set out, and uh, one of the things uh, I did with, together with Hank Tekata, the market surgeon, was to come up with uh, uh, with prototypes of games. So we thought of, we have to make inverse movements. So we thought of a game where you had to steer a boat with an outboard motor, or shoot planes from the sky with uh, a turret. And then we went to Brendel Games, the guys who, uh, uh, who cooperate with us, and they came up with something way cooler. Meet Swank. <laughs> So, yeah, this is Swank. Swank is a robot, and he's not just a robot, he's a butler robot. And his best friend is Sari, the daughter of a boss of a big mining corporation that's mining Paragon 1, a big planet, and it's depleted. But Sari and Swank got lost in the mine. Everyone's leaving the mines, and now they need to get topside as soon as possible, otherwise they'll die. So this is the story. Instead of the medical context, you're helping a girl and a robot save the world. And as you, can, as you look at these, um, uh, these images, they look like laparoscopic instruments. And this is what we try to do. So, have the movements that you need to learn during laparoscopic surgery, but apply them in another context. Apply them as the controls of the game instead of the controls of the simulator. And of course we needed a believable world. So, uh, in this world you do all kinds of skills. You need to squash these terrible slugs. You need to pick up energy orbs to power the elevators or the other machines that are in the world. So you need to help the robots and girls get through these levels. And of course there's a horrible monster that you need to squash and electrify. And there's all kinds of different worlds that you traverse through. And within every world and every level, we increase the difficulty level. Not only of the puzzles in the game, but also of the controls, of the things you need to do. So we start out with just touching things in the world. Then you need to grab things and put them uh, somewhere else. And gradually we have to like, pick up some, something with your one hand and uh, um, like uh, hold something and then screw it loose with the other one. And that's the, the movements you're making during laparoscopic surgery. So, we made a game called Mission Underground on the Nintendo Wii U. And it will be available around uh, after the summer holidays. That's what we're planning to do. And it trains you to do laparoscopic surgery, but you can also do it using normal, uh, uh, the normal controls of the Wii U. Uh, but that's not what I'm going to show you now. I'm going to show you some good, uh, gameplay footage. Um, and you see on the right corner of the, st uh, the screen the surgeon playing the game. And this is one of the first levels where you have to touch things. So, and also enjoy the beautiful orchestral soundtrack because we have this 
beautiful soundtrack written and uh, um, recorded by a full orchestra. It was amazing. exploring the educational space. But there's other beautiful examples like symbiosis and uh, um, beautiful other examples um, for patients and also for, uh, for research. Um, and I want to conclude with this. Teaching our doctors is a very serious business. But when it comes to teaching them the basics of laparoscopy, we think it can be seriously entertaining. Thank you very much. <laughs>